You are now tuned in to Not Without Alonzo. It was really crazy, man, because now I'm on the road with these guys. I'm getting seven, eight grand a night. Mm. They getting fifteen hundred, two thousand. Okay. They watching Atrian collecting money for both of us. Mm. He Atrian, Atrian was collecting money for them because he was a road manager for everybody. Okay. Atrian was road manager even after him, uh, for our N- uh, NWA and Wrecking Crew. Mm. Okay. And they was opening up for us. We had the same hotel rooms. You know, I'm I'm the headliner with, wow. with Battle Cat Richie Rich. <laughs> you know, got on the same planes, same buses, same ho- it, was, it was really awkward, man. It was like going to the prom or something with your ex wife or ex girlfriend. Yeah. You know, you who your ex is at the at your in law's house and you you know, she all cuddled up with her new dude and you got uh-huh. your new girl about but it still feel funny. Yeah. And that's what it was like, man. And we never, we never talked. We never talked the whole, the whole time. Huh. We was on the road. We never had a conversation. Me and Ice T had more conversation than they did. Really? Yeah. It was really awkward, man. Damn. It was really awkward. So you guys were. Um, this was before Boys in the Hood. So you guys obviously made made up. Dre, you you, you were cool with Dre after this, or? We didn't, man. We didn't talk again until like two, three years ago. Oh wow. Okay. We didn't kick it again. Until, we didn't. There was. I'm sorry. I saw Dre one time. He was he was on the run, and I was going to I was going to meet with Cool Mo D. Okay. And Mo, where Mo D was, Dre was going across the street. And I pulled it's a nice Benz. It was Dre. Mm. I jumped out. Hey, flag him down. Oh, Lonzo. We talked like forty five minutes, man. Mm. And that was it. And up until uh, I saw him in his pad a couple years ago. Oh, okay. Yeah. There's one part of Straight Out of Compton where you I get. Forgive me if I'm wrong. You walk into the studio and they're recording "Boys in the Hood," and then you're, you're like, ah, and then you walk out. Is that? Am I correct in saying that? That never happened. That was some. That was some. That was just a movie. So that, that some, never. That, that was, was gonna movie. be my question. So that never happened. Movie bullshit. Because that kind of threw off the timeline. Well, see, they did. Easy did the "Boys in the Hood" demo here. Okay. Okay. But you know, it wasn't supposed to be easy. Mm-hmm. Okay. It was supposed to be the uh, New York guys. Got New York guys, uh-huh. and they brought it into the house, brought the cassette in the pad, and I told them, I said, "Man, you know something." Y'all laughing because, you know, again, they twisted everything around. I was the only one thought the brother had a shot. Easy. Easy. Okay. I'm the only one thought he had a shot. I said, man, look, you know, back at that time, uh, one of the biggest records on the set was Picking Boogers. Okay. Mm. So if Biz Marquis can get a yeah. hit from Picking Boogers, right. why can't he get a one from Boys in the Hood? Oh, man, this voice sound like this. Boys like, all right, man, whatever. Mm-hmm. And then we left it alone. And he was trying to get me to get it played uh, with Greg Mack and... You know, Greg said, I can't play this. It's cussing and yeah. stuff. So they finally did enough edits to make it work. And uh, shortly after that, they were out of here. Mm. Okay. And Turn Off the Lights was, um, we were still working on it. We had, I don't think we had even turned off the lights. It had, Boys in the Hood hadn't taken off yet, I don't think. Okay, something. but it was still out there. Yeah. It was still out there. At the same time, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. What do you remember about those New York guys? That's kind of a story that doesn't get Man, talked about much. very little, dude. Because they only came over here maybe twice. Okay. I think he could easy had used my house as a, as his meeting place for everybody. Mm-hmm. Okay, he met him over here and they talked for a minute, and I think they came back to record, and uh, so I think Dre met him first. Okay, and had easy meet him over here, brought him to the studio to meet Easy, and they talked about the deal or whatever. Ice Cube wrote the lyrics and they came to do the shit and they left shortly after that. Like, mm-hmm. what the fuck happened? Mm-hmm. Okay, what happened? And I mean, they ain't gonna do it. Easy gonna do it. Okay. Okay, whatever. Mm. That's always my attitude. Whatever. <laughs> okay. Give my money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you don't remember if the whole thing was true, where they kicked him out of the studio and f you guys. Man, oh, y'all yeah. know about that, that shit, dude. That, dude, dude. Uh, come on, man. Come on. Hollywood. Hollywood. Huh? Hollywood. <laughs> Hollywood. Wood. Wood. Nah, they ain't doing that. Ain't no. Oh man, cause easy that wasn't that dude. Oh man. All right, cool, man. Whatever, man. You know. Mm-hmm. Dre wasn't that dude. Mm, yeah, not at all. Cube was super cool. Uh-huh. You know, all right, man. You know, you ain't gonna do it. Don't do it. You know. Yeah. And because uh, Ron, I wasn't the first cat that Easy had an issue with as far as contracts or music. He had, the original, some of the stuff was gonna be done by a dude named Rendezvous. Okay, I know that name. Rendezvous, but he never recorded.